card belongs to the range of ideas relating to polarity and what this latter offers in possibilities for spiritual knowledge and realization. St. Bernard of Clairvaux has bequeathed to posterity a doctrine of fundamental importance. This is his doctrine of the divine image and likeness of man. And there's your duality inherent again in unity, God and man. Well, Jason Lauderhand, I'm going to go through these briefly. Jason Lauderhand, in his Thursday Night Tarot, one of the books I highly recommend to show you that the New Age guru voodoo junk is wrong. It's a wrong use of the tarot. Thursday Night Tarot, this is Newcastle Publishing, 1989. This was a series of lectures that he gave to students, and then they wrote down the questions that the students had also. Lauderhand is so down-to-earth, practical, and interesting. I want you to pay attention to what this man says. This is totally over-the-top fun to understand and read. A student asks, well, why does the angel have one foot in water and one on land? Well, the pool stands for Yesod. This is the sphere of the moon on the tree of life. We know that water symbolizes mind, the foundation of all. This is some of the quantum mechanical interpretations now. So this is very important. (laughs) This pool sums up the whole marvelous procedure of life renewing and reproducing itself. Michael, now he says the archangel is Michael who has been associated with Melchizedek in the Dead Sea Scroll 11Q Melchizedek Fragment. Amazingly, very interesting there, Michael's right foot is in this life-sustaining aspect, and his left foot is on the stabilizing aspect. You notice the duality, the opposites, and and yet they're unified into one here. Symbolized by the body of the angel, of course. The earth plane is the outer world in which you can reap experience for a well-rounded existence. You might say we should have one foot in heaven and the other one on earth. We are told not to neglect either side of the mind-matter equation. Well, this is what the quantum physicists are learning also with the quantum. Science only deals with the physical. Well, the quantum has shown that this is at best a short-sighted way to do science. This is one of the positively shocking aspects of the quantum. He says on page 241, the concepts of mind and matter cover everything we know. Then in the Kabbalah there is something else which we don't know anything about, and yet we deal with it anyway. That's the creative aspect. The mysterious Mo that's hidden in the equation. As far as mind and matter go, we can deal with that. We can see mind in ourselves, and of course we're familiar with the material aspect. The physical world actually glorifies God. I preach this regularly. Kabbalists see into the physical life, and sold by the Spirit, it's very beautiful. Uneducated, uninitiated people only see the outer aspect. They are taken in by the facade and don't look behind it. They don't see the beauty and the magnificence of the structure. Actually, it's fantastic. It's a wonder. Anything is a wonder if you have eyes to see it. The student asks, the mysterious Mo is Chochmah, right? That's correct. You might think that wisdom is just knowing everything in the book, but really it's a living thing that's hard to describe. There are quantum physicists who say the entire universe is conscious now. A living thing. Very, very interesting. Skipping over to page 286. Listen to what this man says about meditation. Fantastic. The student says, When you meditate on what's going on around you, do you try to open to everything? You try not to react to it, he says. You let it speak to you in its own terms. It's a frame of mind in which you are not making judgments or categorizing. You're simply looking and perceiving. You are being an observer. (laughs) You see. If you get personally involved, you disturb the perception and can't see straight. We're trying to get rid of all conditioning and preconceptions about anything. The student asks, is this really possible? 
He says, yes, it's possible. For instance, consider the animals. It's likely that some appeal to you more than others. Some seem funny, others ugly, and so on. But as far as the animals themselves are conceived, they all think they're beautiful. We're trying to realize that these things are doing the best they can. We want to accept them just as they are. This is seeing nature as she is, instead of trying to fit the world into some smart scheme of ours. Don't forget that our consciousness is imprisoned, and we're trying to get it out. Life is an organic affair, a creative living thing. It can't be put in a box. We certainly should question our beliefs about it. Einstein's theory of relativity shows that we don't really know what's going on. For instance, time is based on relationships. It can be stretched out or compressed. If you're having fun, time flies. If you're going to hang, it drags. Many people have experienced their whole life in a few seconds. Time is a useful concept, but that's all that time is. It's just a concept. You know this world is like a play, and time is whatever the author says it is. From the point of view of wisdom, space is a concept too. In dreams, you can see tremendous vistas. In meditation, you can look out at the whole universe. Well, how big are these visions? We say that the Earth is 8,000 miles in diameter, but what is a mile? We're trying to get to where we can say we don't know how big the Earth is. We don't know. We don't know where we are. We only think we know. What appears to be so is not so. That's pure essence of quantum. <laughs> Page 287, in the consistently meditative state, you have a grasp of things that is quite extraordinary. According to our teachers, there is no other way for us to unlock the universe. It has to be revealed to us, and it is revealed to us when we believe that can happen. A student asks, well, why is the water in the vases being poured in two different ways? The Kabbalah uses water to symbolize mind. Everything we know has to do with mind. This is pure quantum physics here. This is the conclusion of quantum physics. Everything we know has to do with mind. In the tarot, the blue robe of the high priestess flows down as the stream of mind that runs through everything and unites everything. This is the second card of the major arcana. Her robe begins the flow of the water that's found throughout the tarot cards. Mind informs everything, including itself, because it has the peculiar characteristic of being able to look at itself. Some very interesting quantum speculations in this, too. The way Isis pours the water in key 17. Now, this is the star card. This is the other card that I call the quantum card. She's pouring a vase on the ground, and one vase in the water, and there are stars above her head. These stars can be seen as the particle aspect of the universe. The water being poured in the pool of water, which her foot is standing on, is undulating in water waves, rings. This is a beautiful illustration of quantum physics. Compact, powerful symbolism here. And she's shown nude. This is seeing the naked truth. The true duality. In unity, basically. The way Isis pours the water in Key 17 shows that mind flows in two directions. We can direct it to the inner or the outer, toward heaven or toward the world. These two functions are sometimes referred to as the higher mind and lower mind. In Kabbalistic thought about Moses, it was pointed out that he put his mind inward. And this gave him a position of leadership. In this card, the pool is a bay in the ocean of the universal mind. Or, as the quantum physicists now say, conscious. They say the universe is conscious. I've got some books on that. Breathtaking. Well, the teaching states that our mind is directly connected to the universal mind.